Jayanilo premadana karuna prachu Heno prabhu kota gela chayataku Kaha mora swaru prupa Kaha sanata Kaha dasara gunata patita pava Kaha moram bhatta juga Kaha kaviraj Eka kale kota gela gora nataraj Pashane kuti bo mata anale pashibo. Koranga gune rani de kotangele pambo. Se samba sangi ra sangi je koi lombi las Se sanga na paya kande narutamada Jehanilo premadana garona prachu Heno prabhu kota gela chayataku Jaya Vaishnav Taku, Vaishnav Taku, Jaya Vaishnav Taku, Jaya Vaishnav Taku. So this is written by Narutam Das Thakur and this is the disappearance day of Narutam Das Thakur. He who brought the treasure of divine love and who was filled with compassion and mercy. Where is such a personality as Srinivas Acharya gone? Where are my Sarup Damodar and Rupa Goswami? Where is Sanatan? Where is Raghunath Das, the savior of the fallen? Where are my Raghunath Bhatta and Gopal Bhatta? And where is Krishna Das Kaviraj? Where did Lord Goranga, the great dancer, suddenly go? I will smash my head against a rock and enter into fire. Where will I find Lord Garanga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Being unable to obtain the association of Lord Garanga, accompanied by all of these devotees in whose association he performed his pastimes, Narottam Das simply weeps. Hare Krishna. So we will read about Narottam Das Thakur 
uh, at the end of the class. Okay. No, it's not a verse. It's back again to prose. Yeah. Okay, just give me a second here. Narayanam namaskritya Narang chayva narotamam Devim sarasvatim vyasam Tato jaya mudiriyet Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and to Nar Narayan Rishi, the Supermost Human Being unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashta prayesha bhadreshu Nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavatyuttama shloke Bhakti bhavati naishtiki by regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service to the pure devotee, all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil. And loving devotion to the Supreme Lord, who is glorified in transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay. On this 25th day of October 2021 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Canal 5, The Creative Impetus, Chapter 6, The Activities of Lord Rishabhadev, text number 6. And it's not a verse. Atayvam akala loka pala la lamo, pivilakshana, jadabad avaduta besha basha chaditair, avilakshada bhagavat pabhavo yoginam, sam paraya vidhim anushikshayan, sakalevadam jahasuratman yatmanam of asang vyabahitam anartantara, bhavenan vikshamana, uparatana vritti uparama. Translation. Lord Rishabhadeva was the head of all kings and emperors within this universe. But assuming the dress and language of an avaduta, he acted as if dull and materially bound. Consequently, no one could observe his divine opulence. He adopted this behavior just to teach yogis how to give up the body. Nonetheless, he maintained his original position as a plenary expansion of Lord Vasudeva, Krishna. Remaining always in that state, he gave up his pastimes as Lord Rishabdev within the material world. If, following in the footsteps of Lord Rishabdev, one can give up his subtle body, there is no chance that one will accept a material body again. Purport. As Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita 4 9, Janma Karma, I'll say you say, Janma Karma Tame Divyam, Evam Yo Veti Tatvataha. Chakva dehum punar janma. Naiti ma meti sorjana. One who knows in truth the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjun. This is possible simply by keeping oneself an eternal servant of the Supreme Lord. One must understand his constitutional position and the constitutional position of the Supreme Lord as well. Both have the same spiritual identity. Maintaining oneself as a servant of the Supreme Lord, one should avoid rebirth in this material world. If one keeps himself spiritually fit and thinks of himself as an eternal servant of the Supreme Lord, he will be successful at the time he has to give up the material body. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Salakya Chokshu unmilatam mena tasmai shri gurave namaha. 
I was born in the darkest ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So, why did Lord Rishabhadev take on this role of an Abhaduta? And I would say, what should I say? To the extreme extent. Because Nityananda was also an Abhaduta, famously. But he didn't quite do the things that, uh, that uh, Rishabhadev was doing. Although he did sometimes appear naked in the house of Lord Chaitanya. And uh, Lord Chaitanya said, what are you doing? You know, he put on some clothes and he would just look at him like a child. And so he did some things like that, but not like what Rishabhadev was doing. So apparently he did this as part of the preaching, to teach the yogis how to give up the body, and also how to become indifferent to the body before giving it up. You remember he was just practically like a deaf and dumb stone. People would spit on him and do other things disrespectful, and he wouldn't even react. And whatever came to eat, he would eat, and so forth. So he was in this extreme position, and as we're going to read in the next few verses or prose passages, uh, he was in a forest fire, and the whole body just disappeared that way. But it didn't exactly burn. You'll see it's not because it's not a material body. He acted as if dull and materially bound, so no one could uh, observe his divine opulence. So this is sometimes... Uh, what the uh, avatars do. They hide their divinity uh, so that they can act as oftentimes human beings. Uh, Krishna certainly did that. We were just reading last night in his Leela, Vrindavan Leela. He hid his divinity uh, often, although sometimes the, when the demons came, he would, of course, show that and his power. But even then, they wouldn't believe, oh, this is Narayan. No, he didn't want that. They would think, oh, it must be a a demigod or something, you know, but not, not the supreme personality of God. And in, in the most delightful pastimes, which is we're celebrating every day here, uh, he would completely hide his divinity. He would pe appear as a helpless child to his mother, very naughty. You know, that word imp is perf perfectly fits Krishna in my little poem. You read it, it's very mischievous. He's always running around. And so... Uh, because he, there's a wonderful chapter in the Adi Lila, for those who haven't read the Adi Lila yet, in chapter 4, where Krishna's Kaviraj, he reveals what Krishna was thinking when he first came, 5,000 years ago, how he wanted to dis, dis, have a display of bhakti at this Raganuga, Ragatnaka platform, completely spontaneous. Uh, there's a verse about that in the Bhagavatam. Anugrahaya bhakta na manasam de masitaha bhajate tadrishi krida ya chut vatat parobhavet. Out of my compassion for the devotees, because there's always devotees of Krishna on the, on the planet, um, but after some time, uh, the memory of his intimate leela is, becomes a little fuzzy, you can imagine. So he, he came to renew that. He brought a replica. He made Vrindavan as a replica of Goloka Vrindavan. And the pastimes there are exactly replicas. And uh, so he uh, and enacted his, his pastimes, most intimate pastimes, in which he doesn't uh, appear right away, at least all the time, to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, he explains uh, why he does this because he much more relishes these intimate loving pastimes than the, the formal worship. He says that when my mother chastises me or my, my beloved gopis rebuke me for coming late to the rendezvous or something, you know, this steals my mind away from the, the hymns of the Vedas, the formal worship. And, and if we can, a minute, try to put our, place, our mind in that place. If we were God... Do you imagine how boring it would be to be always on the pedestal, everyone worshiping you, oh, God, 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 you know, where's the uh, intimate relationship? Where is it? How can I let my hair down, so to speak, and <laughs> just have a friend, you know? Because the, the, the kings are, are always being worshipped, and it's, it's, uh, it makes you kind of remote. So Krishna, he accepts that in Vaikuntha. You know, that's the basic place for that. But he much prefers to uh, be able to enact the pastimes as a human being. So he explains that there. And then he came as Lord Chaitanya in order to 
Uh, they had these, these reasons of, two reasons, internal and external. One is to spread Krishna consciousness. That's very much part of it. And, and uh, in the Mal Mahabhada Nyaya, you are the most munificent, munificent avatar. You're freely giving love of Krishna to everyone, high and low. Uh, but he also came in order to take the position of Srimati Radharani so that he could relish his own beauty, his own qualities from her point of view. She, she, she's the one who relishes him most, most deeply and most meaningfully, too, because she loves him the most. And uh, she, he wanted to experience uh, her, the glory of her love and the pleasure she felt from uh, loving him and being loved by him. That's explained at the beginning of the CC. So that's when Krishna comes himself. Now, in, we're reading here the various avatars. When he comes as, as uh, Lord Ram, he also takes the role kind of of a human being, although he does superhuman things, you know. But uh, that's also for a specific reason, uh, to, to show the, uh, the, the importance of protecting the wife, and, you know, and, and, and maintaining and like that, and the, uh, to annihilate Ravana. You know, he came in order to do that, and do, and do that, of course, he showed superhuman things. He fl floated the, the, the rocks, and eventually killed Robin in a superhuman way, but uh, he, but 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 Krishna comes in all these different ways, just suitable for the time and the, and the mission, like these uh, Leela avatars. Why did he come as Matsya? You know, well, things had become inundated, and the, the Vedas were threatened to be lost. So he he saved the uh, who, who was it? I got on the boat. It was like Noah's Ark, basically. You know. He's, he's pulling a big boat with his, you know, his huge fish out in the ocean, you know. So that was necessary. Varaha, so he could dig down in the mud of the Gobadak Gobadak Ocean and get the uh, get the, the earth up. It needed to be floated again, you know. And he was able to fight with Ranyaksha. And what to speak of Nishingadev. He had to meet all those conditions of that Brahma had set, you know, that that Ranyakashi thought Ranyakashi thought that he was immortal. So he comes in this. Uh, uh, you know, a form that's uh, completely unique. Anyway, so, but Krishna, when he comes, he's coming in his original form. He's, he has his human-like form in, in the spiritual world. Because there, he's not worshipped as God in Goloka Vrindavan, right? There's all of these sweet pastimes that are going on. Oh, I saw someone who had gotten it last night. Thank you, Prabhu. Fits perfectly. So... <laughs> So now, what about Rishab Dave? So uh, he, he reveals, and Prabhupada again and again explains, that yes, he is a plenary. By the way, for those who may not know exactly what plenary means, it means full. Thank you. Yeah, I should have pulled this up. Okay. Plenary means full. So full, a plenary expansion means some, uh, a, an avatar or uh, a uh, manifestation of God, who has the full powers of Krishna, but doesn't show all of them. Only Krishna exhibits all 64 qualities that we read about in the Nectar, in nectar of Devotion. And the, the Vishnu forms have a 60. You know, they from, from their bodies come all of these avatars. Anyone they kill is liberated. Vishnu, uh, Shiva and Brahma can't do that. You know, they don't liberate those who they kill. Uh, and uh, all the universes come, as I mentioned. Uh, but they don't have the sweet Leela that Krishna has. Krishna is Sarva Bhutta Chamatkara Leela Kalola Bhada Di Atulya Murada Prebe Mandida Priya Mandala. So Sarva Bhutta Chamatkara Leela Kalola Bhada Di. He's an ocean full of these wondrous pastimes, as we were leading last, last, last night, uh, uh, which astound everyone who hears them. Sarva Bhutta Chamadkara, Lila Kalolavada. Atulya Murada Prema Mandita Priya Mandala. He's always surrounded by devotees at the highest levels of Prem. This describes the Rasa dance in the gopis. You know, only Krishna has this, this kind of relationship. Trijagun Manasakashi, Mulali Kalakujita. Only Krishna has that flute, which, which enchants everyone in the universe. It's described that the gopis are uh, singing about Krishna. He's wandering in the forest. So 
So uh, it's, it parallels many of the passages in the Venu Gita, chapter 21 and 35. They, they kind of echo each other, which is all about the Venu, the flute, obviously. But this, a lot of the verses in this 35th chapter are also about the flute. And they're describing that, oh, when Krishna plays the flute, he's got his left shoulder on his left cheek. Now, I happen to play the flute, so I know that it's a long flute. He's playing like this, you see? And uh, what happens with this? With this uh, yeah, it's got to be really long. <laughs> it describes the different kinds of flutes. There's one that's really long. <laughs> Our friend uh, uh, Brother Mohan left some flutes. One of them is really long. It's too, I can't play <laughs> it. The holes are too far apart. But uh, so he's, he's stopping those holes with the soft fingers. The gopis are just thinking of him. You know, they're meditating on him. They're doing their chores, but they're th- singing and meditating about him. Uh, with his soft fingers stopping the holes. And when that sound emanates, the, the devas and, the, and the, the, the demigods and their wives are flying in the sky, and they hear the flute, and they, oh, let's go down in here, let's get closer. And then the women become embarrassed because they're becoming attracted conjugally to Krishna, you know, and their, their clothes are loosening. Let's describe that. The gopis, this is the first verse. And now it's really funny, you read Vishnu Chakravarti's commentary, and he says, oh, and the men were also embarrassed because they're writing with their husbands, you know. It's, and then the gopis say the ladies are embarrassed. But Vishnu says, yeah, it can also mean that the men are embarrassed because they're also becoming attracted to Krishna in that way. They're really embarrassed. Their, their clothes are also loosening. So that's the, <laughs> you know, that, that's unique to Krishna. He, only he plays the flute. And asamanodva rupa shri vismapita charachara. Asamanodva, uh, unequaled and unsurpassed. Rupa and shri, beauty and opulence. Krishna displays in the in the Goloka. Now there was once an argument, uh, friendly argument. I think it was between Sub and and, and Shiva's Pandit. Um, probably when they were in, in Puri and they would visit. They would visit every year for twenty years. All the 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 uh, the, the, res- the residents of uh, Nilachala, or, excuse me, of uh, Mayapur would visit Lord Chaitanya and engage in the. Uh, pastimes of the uh, Ratha Yatra and then stay throughout the uh, Shadamasi period. So there was a lot of association. So there was this friendly argument, which, where is there more opulence? Is it in uh, Vaikuntha or is it in Vrindavan? And so Shida was saying, Vrindavan, what's the opulence there? There's a few cows and you know you have some, some uh, nice, nice water and uh, you know but in Vaikuntha, you've got these huge palaces and you've got all this gold and jewels and emeralds and everything. There's no, there's no comparison. And so Subhadarma said, no, no, actually, Vrindavan is more opulent because those trees that the gopis pull the flowers to uh, decorate themselves, those are, chin, those are chintamani trees. You can get anything you want from them. And the, and the, the, the jewels that they, that they decorate their, their ankles with are actually chintamani gems and like that, and he said, but the real opulence there is the, the cows, the Surabi cows. You can get as much milk as you want, and you can get anything you want. So there's no comparison between the opulence. And real, the real opulence is the, uh, the, exchange, the, the emotions, is the, the level of bhakti and love that's, that's being expressed, which is spontaneous, ragatmaka, and that's uh, greater than what's in Vaikuntha. So, uh, so here back to Lord Rishabdev. So he had this mission. He, he gave his teachings, which are eternal. You know, 5,000 years later, Srila Prabhupada spoke everywhere he went in, 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 in India. When the book came out, he was giving lectures on that one verse. Nayam deho deya bhajanga loke krishtan kamanada deva bhujange. This is for human beings, so it's for everybody. Those who have taken birth as a human being should not waste their precious life in sense gratification, which is available to the hogs that eat stool, and also to the dogs and lower animals. It's, you know, he's waking up. You know, that's really shocking. So what should we do? Tapo divyam putaka, my dear sons, you should embrace austerities, not for gaining some power, but for in, uh, getting closer to the divine. Tapo divyam putaka. By those kind of austerities, what, what happens to the heart? Who remembers? Purification. Yeah, your existence becomes pure. Putraka is sattvam shudyed. Sattvam here means the, uh, your existence becomes purified. Well, who cares? What do I get from that? Oh. So sattvam shudyed yasmad brahma saukyam tvanantvam. 
then you can become eligible and qualified to enjoy unending, ever-expanding happiness. So you compare that to this, the happiness of the stool-eating hogs. Which one do you want to go for? Okay. I, I, you know, the idea is you have to be insane not to, uh, to take on these austerities. So that's his first instruction. He goes on with other invaluable instructions. We, we went through them, and they're always uh, worth reviewing. So a very important function. Now, from that instruction, of course, Bara took up the role you know, in, uh, of, of, uh, of leading the, the whole universe, and he had his 90 brothers, or 91, 90, 90 other brothers who were helping him. And then nine of them immediately took sannyas and went out to preach the teachings that they got from their father, expanding on them. Beautiful teaching. Nine, nine yogendras. They have nine lessons in the first two, excuse me, chapter two and three of the 11th canto. Many quotable verses, Lochitanya, uh, 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 Srila Prabhupada would quote in his lectures from there. The most important verse uh, in, the, in the Bhagavatam, the essence of the Bhagavatam, according to Lochitanya, is telling Prakashananda what Ishwar Puri told him. Ah, uh, I always forget how this verse starts. Uh, it's the one about when you, when one that takes a vow to chant the holy name, and then he just chants everywhere, not caring for outsiders. Evam vataksva priyanam akircha jata anuraga dutta chitta ucchai hasat chitta orhulti dirauti gaya jun maravan vittati loka bhaya. One takes a vow to chant the name of uh, Krishna. Swa priyanam akircha, which is very dear to one. Jata anuraga, it generates anurag, love. Jutta, and the heart melts, jutta chitta uchai, and one chants very loudly. And then he laughs sometimes, and it, it describes you know, crying and the, the symptoms of, of love. And he goes around spreading the holy name, you know, not caring about outsiders. You know, the first time they went on Harinam, very first Harinam, they went to uh, the Greenwich Village, the, the, the park in the West Village. What's it called? What is it? The one at the end of the Rathiatra, the Fifth, Fifth Avenue? Something Square Park. Washington. Washington Square Park, thank you. God, how could I forget that? I'm really getting old. So they went there, but that's, that's where the police are. Because I, I used to live there. They protect the West Village. There's a lot more money there, and the NYU and everything. East Village is all these immigrants. And they just let go. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they, they were sat down on the grass and started chanting. But before they went, it describes that uh, the, every, in, the, in the Lilamrita, you read it, they, they, they didn't want to go. You know, they thought, we'll be in, you know, we're doing this thing in the, in, in the, in the storefront. He said, no, no, we're going to go. And he led the, 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 uh, the party. Prabhupada was in the front. And everyone was dressed up. I don't, know if they, I don't think they had the uh, dhotis then. Everyone was just walking in their pants and everything. And so, you know, okay, we'll chant outside, you know, looking around, you know, we're making a spectacle, uh, which is what we do. And uh, <laughs> they sat down on the grass, and the cops came. He said, don't you see the sign? He said, who's in charge here? So who are they going to look at? Prabhupada. Don't you see the sign? He said, no, no sitting on the grass. You know, okay. So they sat on the pavement and finished the, the, the kirtan. Next time they went to Thompson Square Park where things really started to, to, to elevate. But, it, but uh, that's the idea, not caring about outsiders. You know? In other words, being completely absorbed in the holy name. That's one of the teachings. Of, of the, that's the very f in the first teaching. Within that series, this famous verse about fear, Bayam Dutti Abhinabesha Daksyad, what is the source of fear? Prabhupada would quote all the time, you know? And uh, Bhakti Paresh Anubhavova Rakti is also there, is that uh, the advanced devotees who surrender to Krishna, when they engage in devotional service, it's just like uh, taking a feast of prasadam, you know? The, the bhakti nourishes the soul, so that's called pushti. Pushti, you nourish the body, it's called pushti, you're nourishing the soul. And the experience, and what, what, is, what is this compared to that? Direct experience of Krishna by chanting and hearing and serving in your life. And bhakti, and, and, uh, and tushti is the pleasure that comes. Tushti, pushti, uh, that, that's, that's the bhakti rasa, which gives us unlimited pleasure. And what about vairagya? That's coming at every, at every bite. You're taking a vasadam feast, and gradually you become indifferent to eating. So you become indifferent to consuming material things. Very nice for his proper quote. He would always quote the first line and one word. Bhakti pade shana vavarakti anyatracha. Two words in the second line. You, you, you feel the pleasure of bhakti. You feel uh, spiritual nourishment by directly experiencing Krishna. And you become indifferent. Vairagya is very important. That's part of it.
So this is the result of Shabdev's teachings. We're going to see it in the, in the 11th canto. But here he's teaching himself. He, I mean, he himself is teaching uh, to teach yogis how to give up the body. So uh, he maintained his original position as a plenary expansion of Lord Vasudev. Now, there's a, there's a puzzle here that I'm going to have to solve, and if I can solve it, I'll come back and tell you. We didn't read the uh, word by words meaning, meanings. But here it says, uh, Atmanam himself, Lord Vishavadev, being an Avesh avatar of the Lord of Lord Vishnu. Now, Avesh is common, commonly and this is to be Shakti Avesh, right? And those are all jivas. You know, we regard Prabhupada as the Shakti Avesh avatar. This was one of my missions when I went to, in 1977, just when Prabhupada disappeared. Uh, I was working for Back to Godhead, and we heard a, uh, uh, that Shido Swami, one of Prabhupada's most intimate god brothers, uh, had proof that Prabhupada was a Shakti Avesh avatar. Well, that's newsworthy. I'm working for the magazine. So we, after we had placed the uh, flowers that had been on Prabhupada's body in the ground, which then on top of those came this wonderful push, Pushpa Samadhi. I don't know how many of you have been to Mayapur, but uh, it's beautiful. And that's been there ever since the uh, 80s, mid-80s. Ambarish built that also. That was the first one that went up. Anyway, so uh, then I went across the river and I visited Chita Maharaj. And uh, I also got to see Krishnadas Babaji. And I, my, my unforgettable little interaction with him. He, Prabhupada loved him. Every, you know, he would always chant. He was, he was uh, just chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> and he would laugh a lot. And he loved the devotees. A lot of the devotees had nice interaction with him. So being only two years in the movement, you know, and being a, a great fool, as soon as I walked in, he let me in the gate. I said, would you like to hear a nice shloka? You know. <laughs> <laughs> so he laughed. So sure. So I, I chanted something from the Krishna Karnamrita. I forget what verse it was. And then he laughed even more. He said, oh, just see what Swami Maharaj has done. He has the Mlechas and Yavanas chanting the, the uh, Krishna Karnamrita. And then he told me an instruction that I have yet to follow, which I really should start to get going. Well, my brain is still active. And that is to memorize all the verses there. I maybe have 10 or 12 of them memorized. There's about 108. So anyway, he took me up to, to uh, Sridhar Maharaj, who at that time, he wasn't so mobile. He would just stay in his veranda and have darshan. A lot of you know, people would come. And I offered my dandabats, of course, and I told him why I came. So he said, oh, oh yes. So he told uh, uh, Krishna Starvish to bring the CC. They had a Bengali, full Bengali, Chaitanya Charitamrita the volume, in one volume, I believe. And he said, find this verse. He gave him a, a, a reference, and he, he found it. And then he chanted it, and I, I know the first line, the second line, what is it? Uh, Krishna Shakti Vina Nahitar Pravartan. The, the first line says that the Yuga Avatar is Sankirtan, congregational chanting of the holy names. But Krishna Shakti Vina Nahitar Pravartan, those who are not empowered, Shakti, Krishna Shakti Vina means without, they can't spread it all over the world. The Prabhupada, at that time, Prabhupada spread it all over the world. So since he had spread it over the world, therefore he was he had the Krishna Shakti. That means he was a Shakti Vesh. So he took that. We printed a story about that. But uh, but here it says that he was Avesh, and but all along, right in this purpose, in this you know translation, and before, if you if you've been following, he's he comes on and he's explained to be a plenary expansion. He several times he mentions he's Vasudev. Uh, 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 but he says, without love for me, Vasudev, you can't, no one can get liberation, which is a very important statement. There's other, other statements like that. Harim vinana sritim taranti. Sriti means uh, path or, or uh, the material world. Without Hari, there's no crossing the, the boundary of the material world. So there it is. He says Vasudeva. And there's a whole chapter on it before you know, his teachings that talks about him many times. So this is a puzzle. If, if I'm able to solve it, I'll let you know. How, how was he Avesh, but at the same time plenary? So he's, he, he maintained his original position as a plenary expansion of Lord Vasudeva. I'm reading from the translation. Remaining always in that state, he gave up his pastimes as Vishabdeva within the material world. If following in the footsteps of Rishabh, they won't give up his subtle body, there is no chance that one will accept the material body again. 
So that's a, an important part of our philosophy that's explained in, in many places, that we have two bodies. We have the gross body and we have the subtle body. And actually the subtle body is m more important. The gross body we keep discarding. The subtle body stays with us as long as we're in the material world. And that subtle body, uh, the mind, intelligence, and ego, in, in, when we're in the material body, it's a false ego because we're identifying with the gross body and the subtle body. Um, but we are, we, we are neither of those. But as long as we're in the material world, and we're conditioned, that subtle body keeps carrying us from one body to another. Dogs and cats also have some intelligence, mind, they certainly have senses like that. And so a sense of self, I'm, I'm a cat, I'm a dog. So uh, the, the Krishna consciousness, we work with the, with the external body and the internal body, the subtle body as well. But the whole idea is to ultimately purify the internal body. And, and, and the senses also which work with that. But ultimately we have to give up the gross body, even the great devotees, right? But that subtle body, when it's filled with thoughts of Krishna, and you're identifying not as the gross body, but you're identifying as your original spiritual body, which, which is revealed to you gradually, then, that, then you're on your way back to Godhead. You know? And, and uh, that was at the beginning of his teachings. He says, Shudye Sattvam, you purify your existence, which, in, which means your full existence, gross and subtle. And in that way, prepare your way, prepare your path back to Godhead. So, uh, he's, if one can give up his subtle body, so, so giving up the subtle body means that your, your, your uh, soul is no longer uh, um, being weighed down by the false ego and all of its expansions. Why do I say expansions? Read the end of the third cano. Kapila Dev gives a very wonderful explanation of how we came into the material world and how the, the, the material world is created. And it's all this question of the false ego. There's so many souls, but those who are due to be here, they establish the false ego, and the false ego in uh, interaction with the different modes of nature produces the mind, produces the intelligence, and then produces all the gross body, the senses, and all these different things. And so that's, that's, this is our imprisonment. It's, you know. So if we understand that, then we should make a, a, a sankalpa. Remember what a sankalpa is? A strong vow, a determination, to work with our gross and subtle bodies uh, in a way that links us to Krishna in yoga. It's serve, serving uh, to, with, with the mind to always think of Krishna, with the voice to always glorifying, with the ears to always hear about, hear about. As we heard, Savaimana Krishna Badara Vindya. We had this wonderful class. This is Ambarish was saying, how you can use everything in Krishna's service. So that's purify, purify, purifies, and then uh, eventually you're, you understand your real ego, who you really are. That's revealed in the heart. The, the, uh, should the, uh, what is it, the uh, Sarup Siddhi. Your real sarup, and that's the definition of mukti. We don't have to look for mukti outside of that. Mukti hidvanita rupam swarupena vivastiti. Mukti is defined as giving up all of these false forms, which we are not. Even in this one body, we have so many forms. What to speak of? You know, body, the body, the body, and be situated in one swarup. You're actually your actually eternal form and character and dress and everything by which you have your eternal rasa with Krishna. Which is not boring because it's all there's all unlimited variety in that in that in those relationships, you know, just as there is in the material world. So here, Robert Rishabdev, in the time he lived, and he's teaching all these yogis how they can uh, become in completely indifferent to the externals and even give up the subtle body, and then there's no chance that one will accept the material body again because uh, one is situated in his spiritual mind, intelligence, and and so-called physical body. So that's what's going on. Now Prabhupada gives us, he loves this verse. This is like the second most quoted verse, Janma Karma Chame Divyam. Uh, if we can just understand, now you may have noted, I don't know if you noticed there, I, I put that in the translation. I'm going to try to campaign to put that word in the translation. And just like there were some words that were restored in the, from the Macmillan Gita to the 83 Gita. This is one that we overlooked. I wasn't working at that time on the Gita. Janma Karma Chame Divyam Evam Yobeti Tatvataha. Whenever Prabhupada would quote this verse, 90% of the time he would emphasize on that. Because in India, 
Right? You knew Krishna before you even, you know. It's like Krishna bicycle shop, you know. It, it's just, yeah, I know Krishna. He grew up in uh, Bindavan. He danced with the gopis, right? You know, I know about them. I know Krishna. General Karmajan. No. Tattvataha. <laughs> you have to understand who Krishna really is. First, the power and the glory. Start with that. And our relationship, we're insignificant. We're completely dependent at every moment on Krishna and his mercy for breathing, for living, you know. In other words, that's, you know, understanding. And then Janma, yes, how he, he appears, Janmastami, you know, that all of that and his activities or lila, uh, we can understand truth. Then, when one gives up the body, one is sure of returning, going, going home back to Godhead. So that touch with the word, and it appears in two other very important verses. Uh, what is that one? Manushyanam sahasthayishu krasjid me priya kuttama. Is it? Manushyanam sahasthayishu kuttama. Tatpadaha, at the end. Out of thousand among men, only one will try for perfection. Out of thousand of those who perfect perfection, only one knows me in truth. And then the most, even more famous, Bhakti Amama Bijanati Yavanyas Chasmi Tatvataha Tato Amam Tatvato Gyava Vishade Tadanantadam. Appears twice in that one verse. Only by Bhakti can I be understood. Janati Yav can I be understood in truth. You see? And when, 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 actually, when one actually understands me in truth, he can enter into the kingdom of God. So we'll see. But, but even if it's not in the English translation, understand that there is that caveat. So this is, this is available to us. We've been given all these books. Srila Prabhupada is speaking to us, so many lectures, so many ways. He's trying to just describe what's the truth of Krishna's birth and activities and who we are and in relation to them and what is this world you know, some bandha jnana, and then giving us a method, vidaya uh, jnana, of what to do in order to realize this, and, and you know, promising us prayojana, the, the ultimate goal of life, pure love for Krishna, which entails going back to Godhead. Even if you don't, you know, even if you stay in this material world, but if you're in that consciousness, you're basically back to Godhead. You realize that this world is also the kingdom of God, isn't it? I heard Robert so many lectures early on. I, I love to hear these old New York lectures. I made a little playlist. You can do that on the iPhone or iPad, iPod. Of just the New York lectures, you know. <laughs> now some of them, of course, aren't the early lectures. He went back there and lectured, you know. Some of those I heard personally. But uh, he's describing that, yes, for the, for the pure devotee, there's no material world. Because it's all related to Krishna. This is Krishna's energy. This is, everything is Krishna's energy. So he's seeing with that vision and living in that plane. You know, then you're back to Godhead. So anyway, this is uh, the simple purport here. Uh, by keeping oneself an eternal servant of the Lord. So he's emphasizing identifying oneself. And if you identify yourself as something, then you act on that basis. If you say, oh, I'm an American patriot, you know, okay, let's carry the flag, let's go have a demonstration or whatever. Buy a gun. Now it's a, you have to have guns in here. Supposedly. Anyway, I'm not going to get there. I hope you didn't step on anyone's toes out there. But uh, the idea is how you identify yourself. And that may change. It will change during your lifetime. All right. Now I'm a senior citizen, so I've got to apply for Social Security, you know, and whatever, you know. In other words, it's all <laughs> false. It's a false uh, identity. That's what it's called the false ego. So if you're in your real ego, and you're, that it doesn't matter what your external body is. Prabhupada was, was serving Krishna as much as when he was, you know, in 1977 in November, as he was in 1965 in New York. He didn't have, the body wasn't cooperating, but his internal service was going on like anything. There's this wonderful uh, uh, remembrance. There's a devotee named Siddhanta who's collected the remembrances, the video, over the years, and they're all on YouTube now, I think. There's one devotee passed away recently, his name was Pita Das. He preached for years in China, although he wasn't Chinese, he was American, but he went there with Tabal Krishnamaraj when he opened it up years ago and he stayed, I think got married there, maybe. But he was there for 30 years, but then he got the remembrances. And one of the things that he pointed out is that when Prabh he, was, he would spend time with Prabhupada in 1977. He was there at least a month straight before Prabhupada disappeared. And sometimes he would be with Prabhupada alone and probably speaking like that. And so he only heard us. 
It probably wasn't, it may have not been recorded. But he said that Prabhupada was referring to this Brahma Bhutta verse in the Bhagavad Gita, quoted Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma, Nashochati Nakanchati, Samaksarveshwin Madhbhaktim Labhadevada. So this Brahma Bhutta platform, one is, is always joyful, that's a part of it, Prasanatma. No, lament, no lamentation, no hankering, you know. And completely above the modes of nature. That's described in the, the end of the 14th chapter. So Prabhupada says, I am that Brahma Bhutta man. I am that Brahma Bhutta man. You know, Prabhupada, even in that situation, he was joyful. No lamentation. You know, I've seen people die who are not devotees. A lot of lamentation. I used to work in a hospital. So much lamenting what I could have done, you know, this and that. Oh, my God, you know, it's, it's, it's a very horrible situation they're in. But for the pure devotees, there's no lamenting. There's no hankering for anything. And to maintain that joy, even in that situation, means you're completely transcendental to the body, obviously. The prophet said things like that. He also praised the position of pujaris. He says, pujaris are of the greatest service. You know, he said that, you know, at that time. He said they're, they're training up for doing what they do in the spiritual world. Our friend Rajendranandan Prabhu, when he came back, uh, I don't know if it was this, this recently, I, I, he may have mentioned it, how he, he had a lot of associated with Janani Bas Prabhu, the long time Pajari in Mayapur. He and his brother passed a few months ago from COVID. And uh, he was, he was ex- you know, uh, Janani Prabhu accepted Janani Bas as a Shiksha guru. You know, and he was saying yes, and and what we're doing, you know, we're preparing this, we're dressing like this, we're preparing the festivals. This is this is the service that the intimate devotees in the, in the spiritual world are doing. So it's a very glorious service when you're, you know, in, in the right consciousness. Obviously, well, everything depends on that. But it's uh, we're you know very fortunate to have such a dedicated crew of pujaris here, who are taking care of the deity so nicely. You know, it's so you know, important, especially at the early stages, that you have that, regulate, give you regulation, keep you clean, they provide a place and an environment where Krishna Kata can flourish, and it's huge preaching. People come for the festivals. Uh, you were telling me in our little uh, ride down to that program how the festival last year, which I, I wasn't here for that one. The first one, I think, was in 18. You saw the one in 19, right? Yeah. Uh, was the, I think it was... 45th anniversary of the installation of the deities here. And we had this big Pushpa festival with all the petals, tons of petals. And people came, there were devotees, you remember Balaram, around the altar, you know, and they were throwing petals and gradually they covered, you know, the feet and they, they covered uh, with petals. And then they started throwing them into the, the, the crowd. And the, the crowd also had petals. I was standing in the back watching all these petals fly. It was just ecstatic. <laughs> what? Up here, too? Oh, yeah. That was like the 2019 one, maybe. This was 2018. The first one was 2018. Yeah, you weren't here. Anyway, I saw it, and it was one of the most ecstatic festivals I've ever seen. I was watching here. I was just watching everyone having such a wonderful time. And then uh, 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 the Shuki came the next year, and you said this was like a great experience for you, right? It was, it was like he's feeling ecstasy and feeling tremendous <laughs> a joy just watching this whole festival. So that's because the temple is maintained, the deities are maintained. It's, you know, it's such a, so important for preaching. Prabhupada knew that, struggled so hard. You know the whole story of Bombay, but all the temples required so much effort to found and maintain, and you know, then occasionally it happened, the Bodhi, a devotee would sell the temple and abscond with the money. That's happened several times. Not big ones, but you know, <laughs> all these house temples, you know. So you can imagine, you know, what Prabhupada was going through to maintain this movement, the letters, thousands of letters, and all these. So that, you know, he was the dearest devotee. You know, as Krishna says, those who are ready to preach and, and spread the movement uh, are most dear to me. So it's available to all of us. We can spread Krishna consciousness, give the cards out, the books out, do you know whatever we can we can do. Vijay has been doing it for forty eight years. I'm sure he's not. Tired doing it. He's committed to do it till he can't do it anymore. <laughs> Obviously, he's feeling a lot of bliss doing it, and it's it's uh, you know Lochi Tide's movement. So Rishabdev is also preaching here. He's tell, teaching the yogis how to disappear, you know, but he's he's given so much instruction that then form the books, which then you know can affect. So the whole everything is working together. 
Okay, that's about all I have to say on this verse. If there's any. Oh, I didn't read about Naratam. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I got carried away. This is my senile brain. We'll, we'll have a question, but I want to read about Naratam first because we're going to run out of time. We've almost run out of time. This is from the Samadhi's book. And before I go to the Samadhi's book, forgive me, I am going to go to... Oh, God. I didn't. We had... Oh, I didn't save it. Okay. Forget that. But I, re I remember it describes he appeared in 1520, I believe, uh, A.D., which is uh, approximately 40 years, 34 years after Lord Chaitanya, in uh, um, Keturi, which is on the bank of the Padma River. It was a kingdom. His father was uh, the king. He was a prince, actually, uh, which is important because it's not mentioned in this thing. I remember, appearing as the son of a king, Sri Narutam Das Thakur, uh, Thakur Mahasai, showed all the bodily symptoms of a Mahapurush, an exalted divine person. He had long arms, a deep navel, golden complexion, beautiful eyes shaped like the lotus petals. In school, he was a shrutidar, able to memorize whatever he hears. Although he quickly mastered Sanskrit and the Vedas, he hankered to serve Krishna. He was a lifelong brahmachari. By the mercy of the holy name, Gornitai, Narutam became detached, left his opulent family, and ran to Vrindavan. Now, he's kind of really compressing things. Because I read, and you know, we shouldn't poo-poo Wikipedia. Because uh, when, when we get to like who Narutam is, the people writing these stories are us. You know, so, so it's bona fide. I couldn't find it. I couldn't, but I remember, I just read it. So what happened is, this, this is well known, that Lord Chaitanya placed in the Padma River his prema. And he said, he was calling out to Narutam, and no one no, who, who he was speaking. He said, there will be a, the great devotee named Narutam, and, one, and he will pick up this prema that I'm putting into this river. And so at a certain point, who was it? Someone reminded him, was it Nityananda, to go bathe in that river and uh, you'll get prema. And he did. And that's how he became mad to leave the kingdom. He wasn't interested anymore. He wanted to go to Vrindavan. Also, he had a teacher who was a, 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 a disciple of Lord Chaitanya, a follower, because was, it wasn't that much after Lord Chaitanya. He was 14 years old when Lord Chaitanya disappeared, when he left in, in 1534. So... Uh, so he, he was this associate of Lord Chaitanya as one of his teachers and he was firing him up and he, uh, he became so attracted he became completely dedicated to Lord Chaitanya and then he just w started going to Mandavan and he was able to, to, to go there he became detached, left his opulent family and ran to Mandavan he took diksha from Sri Lokanath Goswami and chiksha in Gaudiya philosophy from Sri Jiva Goswami uh, diksha from Lokanath Goswami wasn't so easy to get right? <laughs> He didn't want to. Yeah, he was the only disciple. So Lokanath refused. So Narutam wasn't. He wasn't discouraged. He started performing menial service, cleaning up, you know, place where he's passing and everything, for a whole year, I think. And finally, Lokanath said, you know, so who saw him that he was doing that, and he said, okay. He, so he became his only disciple. Um, when he arrived in Navadvip Dam. All the devotees asked him about the health and activities of the Goswamis in Vrindavan. So he was traveling from Vrindavan. They were eager to hear the news from Vrindavan. After visiting all of Lord Gauranga's pastime places in Gaur Mandala, that's the Maya, greater Mayapur area, Naratam Das did the same in Jagannath Puri. Then he went to see the devotees and Lord Chaitanya's pastime spots in Shantipur, Srikanda, Kantak, Nagar, Ekachakra, and Keturi Gram. Ekachakra is where Nityananda appeared. In Ketri, that's his hometown now, Sri Narottam Das Thakur arranged the famous Ketri Mahotsava. This was the first you know, universally uh, celebrated Gaur Purnima festival. And he invited all the followers of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, you know who is in charge? Janavi, Lord, Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda's uh, widow. You know. This was the first Gaur Purnima festival to honor the Divine Appearance Day of Lord Chaitanya. During the festival, six deities were installed. Lord Gauranga, Vallabhi Kanta, Sri Raja Mohan, Sri Krishna, Sri Radha Kanta, and Sri Radha Raman. With his sweet voice, Narutam Das began a wonderful kirtan. His chanting filled the heavens and brought down tears of prema from the eyes of the devotees. There were thousands of devotees who were there, who were all sporty, sporting in the ocean of ecstasy. Then quote, he's quoting from the Bhakti Ratnakara. This is a history book of Gaudiya Vaishnava. 
In the midst of their kirtan, the munificent Lord Chaitanya himself and all his personal associates appeared and joined in the kirtan. Same kirtan. Everyone could see them. <laughs> Anyone who was there could see them. It wasn't just somebody's vision. Like a flash of lightning in the midst of a mass of beautiful blue clouds, Lord Chaitanya himself appeared in the crowd of devotees through a divine manifestation. And it continues. Quote, at that time, although Mahaprabhu had left this world years before, many, many different devotees saw Mahaprabhu in different ways. Those of Sri Navadvip Dham saw him more intimately as Nimai Chandra of Vishwambar, as they knew him during the use with the hair. Those devotees were attracted to Mahaprabhu in Sakya and Vatsalya Ras, those devotees. That the, fo the followers of the six Goswamis, who only knew Mahaprabhu as a sannyasi, related to him in the mood of Dasya Ras. And hundreds of devotees also worship Lord Chaitanya in an Aishwarya mood of awe and reverence. Quote, this festival is considered, uh, this is all in quotations, uh, a major achievement in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Hundreds and hundreds of devotees were invited, including direct disciples of Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, and Advaita Acharya. At this time, many differences existed, existed in the interpretation of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Acharya Rani, she's the Acharya, Acharya Rani, Janavid Devi, came from Kardaha with her entourage, entourage. Presiding over all the Vaishnavas, she resolved the diverse conclusions into one consistent Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, which is what we have today. Important festival. For the first time, the festival featured many kirtan styles, which integrated the glorification of Lord Chaitanya with the glorification of Lord Krishna and his pastimes. And because so many Vaishnavas were present at one place, it automatically made the Ketri festival extraordinary. It also acted as an important step toward unifying all the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. This, this last quote, this extended quote, was from the Shi Navadvip Dham Parikrama book. Narottam Das Thakur wrote many devotional songs about the spiritual master, which we sing every day. That's his song, Shri Guru Charana Padma. Um, actually, there's another line to that song. I don't, I don't think probably, which, which, usually he would, they would sign the songs with, with their name at the end. And there's another line in the song, I think in one of the song books we have it. No, 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 that's something. That, that was added by somebody. That's why we don't sing that. <laughs> um, Narutam Das Sak's songs, uh, although composed in simple, sweet, a simple Bengali language, Narottam Das's songs give Shastrik Siddhanta and devotional inspiration. Srila Prabhupada often sang these bhajans. Considering them non-different from Vedic Shastra, he quoted them in his Bhagavatam lectures. Pratana and Prema Bhakti Chandrika are Narottam's most famous works. The following excerpt comes from Prema Bhakti Chandrika. Quote, Radha and Krishna are my goal in life and death, and they are the masters of my breath. Performing my bhajan only for them, I rise and fall in the ocean of Prema. I pray that I can always maintain this conception within my heart as my highest ideal. There was some rhyming going on there. I don't know if you noticed. Then he stopped. Let me serve the lotus feet of Radha Govinda. Let my mind be filled with dedication to their divine forms that defeat the beauty of Cupid and Rati. With a straw between my teeth, I fall at their divine feet and I present, present my humble appeal. O Kishore Kishori. Those are the deities in Chicago for anyone who wants to see them. O son of Nanda Maharaj, Shama O daughter of King Rishabhanu, Sri Radha, you enchant even Hari, and your bodily complexion is the color of a golden lotus. O Krishna, with a bodily color like an Indranila gem, uh, sapphire, your beauty mocks Cupid. O top, topmost dancers, Sri Radha and Krishna, please dance within my mind. O you whose beauty increases the charm of your dazzling ornaments, day and night I only wish that I shall go on singing your glories in great ecstasy. Narottam Das serves Srimati Radhika as Champak Manjari, his samadhi, his radical Khan, his temple courtyard. Vijay Krishna Babu, it's too late to answer your question. Save it for tonight, okay? Uh, of course, Prabhu. Thank uh, you very much. Okay. Hare all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki jai.